Good evening and happy Earth Day. Welcome to the International We Love You Foundation's Upcycling Webinar. Thank you for joining us. My name is Bryn Reynolds and I'll be your host for tonight's webinar. This year, We Love You is celebrating Earth Day by upcycling. The We Love You Foundation launched a social media upcycling challenge starting on Global Recycling Day, which was March 18th, and ending today, which is Earth Day. So today is the day that we'll hear about the winners. The winners will be announced tonight. But before that, from the comfort of your own homes, you will be learning all about the importance of recycling. And you'll even learn what upcycling is if you don't know what that is. But about recycling, you'll be learning from our guest speaker, Katrina. And make sure you stick around because she's gonna teach us how to play a very special and fun and exciting game. So I hope everyone walks away from tonight's webinar learning how to help restore harmony within our planet, because when we each do our part, we can make a big change, even though it might seem small. If you've participated in We Love You events before, it's great to have you back. And if you're new, we hope you enjoy what we have prepared tonight. So first, I'd like to introduce the We Love You Foundation. So We Love You is a nonprofit organization associated with the United Nations Department of Global Communications. This foundation was established in 2001 by our chairwoman, Zhang Gilja, in South Korea, and has since then expanded to over 50 countries around the world. Chairwoman Zhang Gilja started this organization with the goal and purpose of sharing the love of a mother to all. As a mother cares and concerns for the members of her family, the We Love You Foundation cares and concerns for all the members of the global family. And we do this by various initiatives and volunteer services, some of which you saw in the intro video. And this is what makes We Love You unique. To learn more about We Love You, you can visit our website after the webinar at We Love You, and that's the letter U, USA.org. We also want to share some good news. Are you ready for this? The We Love You Foundation was recently recognized as a global recycling hero of 2021 by the Global Recycling Foundation. And that's because We Love You continued to support the recycling effort even during the pandemic when it got more difficult. So thank you to everyone who helped us to achieve this and supported those efforts. Now I'd like to start off this fun and exciting evening by introducing our guest speaker. I am so excited to introduce her to all of you. Her name is Katrina Boussier Van Heisen. 
She is the Senior Environmental Educator at EcoMaine. Katrina has 13 years of experience in various environmental educator roles across the country. And she's responsible for designing curricula, on-site tour programs, as well as all other education and outreach programming that facilitates engaged waste reduction among residents, schools, and businesses in EcoMaine's 70 plus member communities. Katrina holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in conservation biology and a certificate in environmental studies from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Her passion and commitment to her job's roles inspires students and adults alike to attain their waste diversion and contamination reduction goals. So while Katrina's presenting, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them in the box at the bottom where it says Q&A, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end. Now, let's welcome Katrina Boussier Van Heisen from Eco Maine. Thank you, Katrina. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm going to share my screen here with you. So I'm here tonight to uh, talk on behalf of Recycling Everywhere. Um, I know we're coming from all over the country, maybe all over the globe, and it's not the same everywhere. I wish that it was, um, but we uh, we have some, some general rules as far as recycling goes. But I like to even take a step back and think about before recycling, what can we do? So thinking about this wonderful thing called the waste hierarchy, um, we can try and do certain things on this list to, to make less waste for everyone. So to, to do one thing first is to reduce. Can we use less stuff first? Um, you know, do we need to buy a whole out, uh, a whole a new wardrobe for school or can we just buy some, some good new pieces? Um, do we need to buy the, the little bags of, of chips and things or can we buy a big one and then put them in reusable containers for lunch boxes, et cetera? Do we need to buy bottled water or can we get our own reusable uh, container and, and uh, use filtered water or um, you know, just water out of the tap if it's clean and good for you? So trying to reduce our use of, of material first because that's less material we're then taking out of the earth um, and leaving resources where they should be if we reduce. The next rung here is reuse. You know, can we, we can we reuse things is really important because that's keeping resources out of the waste stream as well. You know, can we reuse that water bottle? Can we uh, reuse our tea mug or smoothie mug or hot chocolate mug or coffee mug? Um, you know, if we did need new clothes, are there old clothes that then we can donate? Um, or, you know, maybe if our kiddos, our shoes don't fit anymore, can we give those away? So whether you can reuse it or someone else can, that's incredible in order to keep that material out of the waste stream. And then we should try and recycle, which is one of my favorite things to do. You know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, we wanna recycle um, in, in most places, cardboard, paper, certain plastics, metal, and glass. Not everywhere takes all these things, um, but a lot of places do. Um, here in Maine, we take uh, number one through seven plastics at uh, most uh, towns here. Uh, lots of metal, uh, cardboard, paper, um, and, uh, and, um, so, and, uh, cardboard, uh, cardboard, paper, metal, glass, and, and, um, plastics. So the next one here is organics. Uh, we want to try, try, try to compost if possible. There's also this cool thing called anaerobic digestion. So we say organics instead of just compost, because there's so many things that you can do with your food scraps. Of course, you could feed them to hungry animals. Maybe you have pigs or chickens, um, on your property. Um, maybe you just have a hungry dog under the table waiting for your scraps. So, um, you know, feed hungry humans, of course, then feed hungry animals and then compost if you can. So we have organics there. And then um, here at EcoMain, we have a waste to energy facility, which means we actually turn trash into electricity in our really incredible building. Um, but in most places, we just have uh, landfills because your trash goes straight into a landfill. So either way, trying to put as little in that landfill as possible. Um, and it really is about commitment. You know, you, you can um, think about uh, what you need to do in order to make sure that we're, we're using this waste hierarchy. Um, but it's so easy to just take the easy path and say, well, you know, I need a quick lunch today. So I'm going to get all this packaging, um, all these packaged foods, um, and I'll throw them, just throw them in the trash. Or 
well, you know, I, I really just want a cheap pair of shoes to last me through the weekend. So I'm just going to buy the cheapest ones I can find. Um, or, well, it's just one coffee cup. Why does it matter? So it is about commitment um, and, and mindset. So can we use this, not that? You know, can we buy quality products instead of the cheaper ones? Can we use our own coffee mug instead of um, the, the, the uh, disposable mugs uh, or containers at the, the coffee shop, et cetera? Um, you know, at this point, we're able to bring our, our own bags to the grocery store. I know for a while there we weren't, uh, but maybe some of you found out the hack of putting your stuff back in the cart and then bringing it to your car and putting things in the, in the grocery bags in your car. Uh, but, you know, can you bring your grocery bags now at this point? So kind of a use this, not that situation. Is there something in your life that you could change, uh, Make maybe make an Earth Day um, uh, commitment, a, a, a resolution, if you will, um, to make sure that you're taking care of the earth? because recycling um, and of course reducing and reusing and um, putting your organics somewhere is insanely important because our landfill is going to fill up with materials. Um, it is estimated that uh, a, an enormous amount of stuff that we do say, oh, well, it's trash, could have actually been reduced or sorry, reused, recycled or composted. Um, the EPA estimates that about 40% of material in landfills is organics or food waste. Um, so that's an incredible amount of stuff that is just wasted. We want to make sure that that stuff goes to a better and higher use. So just um, a general rundown of recycling. Again, this is different all over the country, all over the world, but in general, certain things are recyclable and certain things just aren't. So th things that you could potentially recycle in your area include cardboard of all types, paper, glass containers, plastic containers with a recycling symbol on them, and metal containers, lids, and aluminum foil. So some places have single sort recycling. EcoMaine has that here in Maine, but some places are what we call source separated. That means say you put your cardboard here, your ferrous metals here, your number one plastics here, your paper over here, and so on. So it just depends on what you do in your own um, area, in your own town. Uh, but all these things can go off and make wonderful things. Um, one thing that is generally not recyclable in your curbside or transfer station or, or town bins are what we call films or bags. And I say it's more than just bags because it's things like your case wrap, say you bought a, a case of Gatorade. Uh, maybe you have dry cleaning, the bag around your dry cleaning, your bread bags, your produce bags, maybe you got um, a new shirt or something in the mail from, I don't know, Carhartt or L.L. Bean. Um, those um, plastic shipping envelopes are great to recycle here. Um, excuse me, air pockets, uh, bubble wrap, uh, food storage bags, etc. So these things really typically cannot go in your recycling bin. But great news at the grocery stores here in Maine, it's Hannaford's, Shaw's, um, but then uh, uh, countrywide is uh, Walmart, Target, Kohl's, even Whole Foods. They actually have bins at the front of the store. And you can put all your, say, films and bags in those bins, and they can go off to make new and wonderful things. One example of things they can create is something called Trex decking. Think of your patio, your back deck. It can be made out of plastic films, plastic bags. It's incredible. You can look up Trex, T-R-E-X, is just one company that takes these films and turns them into something new. So keep that in mind in the back of your, in the back of your mind, take these things out of your recycling bin if you've putting, been putting them in there. If your town doesn't take them, take them out of your trash can because there's somewhere better to take them. Next time you go to the grocery store, pop those films and bags in the bin and be on your way and know that you've made a dent in uh, the good of recycling here. Our general, you know, paper, plastic, metal, glass, and cardboard type things can be turned into new incredible things as well. Um, everything from playgrounds. This whole playground was made out of thousands and thousands of milk jugs, soup cans, and aluminum cans. Uh, we can make fun toys. Here's one company called Green Toys. They make everything from airplanes to fire trucks to recycling trucks out of number two milk jugs. Um, here's one company, L.L. Bean, makes uh, their water hog mats out of recycled uh, plastic. Um, North Face has some shirts made out of number one plastic as well. Think of your uh, strawberry blueberry containers, uh, your Poland Spring water bottles, other um, you know, soda bottles, that's all number one plastic. 
Here's a fun company here in the US called Liberty Bottle Works. They can make wonderful uh, water bottles for you to fill up and use every day. Um, there's a fun company out in Oregon that uses recycled metal to make bicycles. Um, your recycled paper can go off and make everything from uh, new paper shopping bags to new takeout bags to support your local businesses and, and restaurants during this whole COVID. Um, and then, you know, it's silly to think about, but my favorite is actually toilet paper. Um, I think why in the world would I want to cut down trees from a forest and take off the, you know, take out the beautiful nature and the homes for the birds and the oxygen producers, et cetera, when I could recycle my paper into toilet paper. So think about that next time you're at the, the grocery store buying toilet paper, try and buy everything you can with recycled content from your mayonnaise jars to your toilet paper. Um, and therefore you're helping recycle and helping that uh, wonderful cyclical cycle go. And hey, food is not garbage. So if you're able to put that food into a compost uh, bin of some kind, maybe you have room in your backyard and you can backyard compost. That's incredible. Maybe you don't have a backyard. Maybe you don't have any room. Um, you can use something called vermicomposting. Maybe check this out later. Vermicomposting is composting with worms. You can do it in your closet, do it in your basement, do it under your sink in your kitchen. It doesn't need that much room. Very cool. Some places have drop-off sites. So maybe your transfer station or your town hall or your um, somewhere uh, has a, a place where you could drop off your food waste and then it goes to a certain um, company like a, a farm to be composted. We have a couple of those here in Maine, but maybe they're um, elsewhere. I know they're elsewhere as well. Um, and then maybe some of those towns and, and companies have food pickup um, through contracts as well. So there's just a lot of ways to get the food out of the garbage can, because again, we don't want it in the, in the garbage because one, it can make beautiful soil to then grow new, I don't know, flowers, strawberries, trees, you, you imagine it, we can grow it. Um, and two, in a, what we call a regular landfill where there's trash just piling up, that, that garbage or that, uh, sorry, those uh, food scraps actually create methane, which is a really toxic uh, greenhouse gas. So if you want to do something good for Earth Day, get the food out of your garbage can. So in summary, you know, trash is great. You're all going to make it from your granola bar wrappers to your gum to your old smelly shoes that nobody wants anymore. But try and look at that trash really closely and say, are there reusable things that we can get out? Give it away, use it again. Are there recyclables that we can get out, put it in the recycling bin so it can turn into something new? And is there food waste here that we can then put in the compost uh, to help make new soil? So lots of great things that we can think about here. Um, you know, change your mindset or, um, you know, keep going if you've already got that mindset. Um, you know, be mindful consumers. Uh, when you go to the grocery store, uh, choose the good things with your wallet. So um, I hope you find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're on all those places as well as our website, ecomain.org. And uh, you know, you can email us in any time, info at ecomain.org. Um, so thanks for listening to all that good stuff. Um, and I hope you're already having a happy Earth Day. Um, we're going to play a really fun game. So the way to find this game, if you want to play it later, is you're going to go straight to ecomain.org. You're gonna go down to what can be recycled. And then you're gonna go down to which bin should I put it in and click on Recyclopedia. This, just so you know, is a fun database that we created and there's other databases just like this across the country. Um, but you can type in your item in your hand that you wanna recycle, say from a granola bar wrapper to a styrofoam plate to anything you've got, and you can type it in here. You know, this only applies to EcoMaine communities here in Maine. You know, it's not gonna to apply to say Oregon or Texas, but it's just a fun way um, to, to check out if something is, could be recycled. But if you wanna play the game, it's right here, our Wicked Smart Recycler. So you play the game and here we are. We've got play now button to level one. So I know that there's gonna be a poll for us. So let's see here. We've got a poll and I've got coffee grinds and a filter. So am I gonna drag and drop this to the transfer station, to the trash can, to the yard waste, to the food waste or backyard composting, to the recycling bin or to the resale or reuse shop. Why don't you go ahead and vote what you think we should do with these coffee grinds and filters. All right, it looks like most folks got it correct. We put it in the food waste or backyard composting bin. That's excellent, good work. Let's go to the next one after we drag and drop here. Um, the next one here is 
a diaper. Now, this is a big one because sometimes we get this on the recycling bin. And I'll tell you right now, it's not the recycling bin. Does this diaper go to the transfer station, to the trash bag, to the yard waste, to the food waste or backyard composting, to the recycling bin or to the resale or reuse shop? Y'all are super quick on that one. It can be trash and only trash. Diapers are not composted. Diapers are should not go to the resale shop, uh, et cetera. So diapers will pop right here into the trash can. Up next, we have aluminum foil. And of course, certain area or different areas do um, differ on what they take in the recycling bin. Um, so just keep in mind that it might be uh, different. You know, maybe it goes to a different place in your area. So uh, go ahead and put in what you think, where you think this aluminum foil once used if clean, will go. All right, recycling, most of you got that right too. And of course it might go to your transfer station in your town. Maybe your town doesn't take it and it might go in the trash. Um, so there's definitely different options for everybody. Um, so the overwhelming majority, aluminum foil is recyclable. Great work. Leaves, does this go to the transfer station, to the trash, to the yard waste, to the food waste, to the recycling or to the resale shop? What are your thoughts here? We'll wait for the poll to pop up. There it is. Where does your, where do your leaves go? Excellent. Most of you got your yard waste. And of course, I'm sure a lot of you do backyard composting. I'm sure a lot of you um, allow the yard, the, the um, leaves to go in the food waste as well. So that's great. And of course, a lot of you probably take your leaves to the transfer station. So you really are all correct here. Um, depending on what happens in your town, we'll just put them in the yard waste here. Next up, tea bag. Where does our tea bag go? What are your thoughts on this poll here? I'll say the retail shop probably doesn't want this one. Food waste backyard composting, well done, well done. Of course, it does matter what that uh, comp what that tea bag is made out of. I have seen some in like a plastic mesh. So just you know, eye your tea bag when you're done with it and say if it's in some sort of plasticky, um, which I, f I find very odd, uh, plasticky tea bag that goes actually in the trash, unless of course, which would be great if you could cut it open and put that in your compost and then um, trash the the bag. But in general, most most tea bags are in some sort of compostable um, uh, material. So just keep that in mind. Here's one we get a lot of questions about, batteries. Batteries, can these go to the transfer station, to the trash bag, to the yard waste, to the food waste bin, to the recycling center, or sorry, the recycling bin, or to the resale shop? And if, again, this might differ wherever you may be. So answer what you think the answer is in your area. Excellent. So many, many people take their uh, batteries to the transfer station. That's great. Um, some places do allow it in the recycling bin. Uh, most places don't, uh, however, but there may be some, some special places. You can also recycle certain batteries. Um, here at EcoMain, we do allow them in the trash. Um, you know, of course, they're not yard waste, they're not compostable, and they don't go in our recycling bins. Um, but let's see. It goes in the trash here, but again, um, it could. Uh, change depending on where you are. So we're going to start this park and we put some trees down. So should we keep going my friends? All right, let's continue with our paper. Where do we think our paper should go? Paper and envelopes.
Excellent. Most, most of you said recycling. Excellent job. Um, you know, if it's something that's like a, a lot of manila folders or something, you know, maybe the resale shop wants them, but in general, the recycling bins really the only place for your um, paper. Plastic shopping bags. This is a tricky one. Where do we think your plastic shopping bags go? Very good. So a lot of people do take them to the resale reuse shop so someone could reuse them there. A lot of places have that plastic film collection at their transfer station. Maybe some of you do have uh, facilities where your plastic bags are accepted in your recycling center and a lot of you don't. So trash. So again, very varied, but the 100% of you got it correct in that these are not compostable. Let's see where it tells us to drop these. Again, remember you can take those back to grocery stores too. Paper milk cartons or say orange juice cartons, any kind of cartons here, what can we do with those? Well done, they are on, on the whole recyclable here in Maine, of course they are. Some places might only accept them in the trash. That's fair. Um, you know, I, would a resale or reuse shop want them? You know, maybe not, but you could use them for fun craft projects, say um, starting seedlings and things, but make sure they're empty and then recycle them. Ooh, a full can of paint, a full spray paint can. Where do you think that might go? Or even half full, just not empty. Resale or reuse shop. So I'm sure some people could use this. Great. The transfer station also accepts things like this. We wouldn't want this in the recycling bin. Um, if you have paint care, they might take spray paint. Uh, paint care is a really cool company uh, or um, organization uh, that uh, accepts paint to be recycled. Um, and you can drop it off at places like hardware stores, etc. Even transfer stations take it. Check out paintcare.org for that. Um, let's see where it wants us to take this. Sometimes a transfer station. Uh, paper egg carton. Where does our paper egg carton go? Excellent, excellent. Most of you said recycling. It could also be composted. Very good. Could go in yard waste because it is organic in nature. Um, uh, the reseller reuse shop might take it. You know, it depends on, of course, where you go. Um, I'm sure your local farmer's market would love to take it back too. So let's try the recycling bin on this one. And finally, plastic water bottle or plastic bottle in general. Could be a, a Coca-Cola bottle. Excellent. Most, most, most of you said recycling. That is exactly where it goes. Now, the cool thing is that um, there are uh, redeemable states out there. Um, you know, Maine is one of them. And we want to make sure that you can redeem those bottles if you choose to get the money back for them. Um, and if you don't choose to, they are 100% recyclable in your recycling bin. You know, I just love trees. So I'm just going to make more trees in my beautiful park here. Me too. Should we keep going? Yeah. All right. Oh, a computer, a computer. Where should we take this computer? Transfer stations, absolutely. Some take them as e-waste and also reuse and resale shops. Excellent, both correct. Um, computers can be recycled, but they have to go to the correct places. Um, a little plug for Goodwill, they do have, the, um, a, I think it's called Good Tech Program. So they do take computers and things like that um, to, to be either recycled or refurbished and then sell um, at a low price. So let's see if they want it in the transfer station 
or do they want it at the resale shop? Excellent. Next up, we've got the garden hose. The garden hose. Spring cleanouts coming. I know one of you got a garden hose somewhere. Some of you said reuse and resale shop. Absolutely. If it's still usable, definitely someone else needs to use that. If it's broken, of course, the only place that can go is trash. Some of you might take it to the transfer station in like a bulky bin or something like that. It is never going to be recyclable. I'm sorry for that 13% that said recyclable. It's never going to be yard waste or food waste. Um, so the only options here are resale, reuse, or, um, or giveaway, of course, if it's good, um, or um, transfer station or trash. Let's see where it wants us to go with this. We'll just pretend that one was broken. Styrofoam packaging, styrofoam packaging. I'm gonna give you a clue, this is not compostable. Excellent, most of you got this great. Uh, it is trash. Some of you might have um, styrofoam recycling in your area and that's amazing. Lots of places don't though and they might, and but folks still think, hey, I think my uh, styrofoam is, is um, recyclable. So please do, um, do everyone a favor and check in your certain area to make sure that it's actually recyclable in your area. Instead of just looking at that arrow on the bottom, that arrow does not always indicate a recyclable item. Double check with your town, with your area to make sure it goes in the right place. But for us, the only place for styrofoam is trash because there's no one to buy it from us. Plastic detergent bottle, or plastic laundry container. Where does this one go? Typically number two plastic for a fun fact. Excellent job, excellent job in recycling. Again, sometimes your transfer stations are the place where you recycle um, or they maybe they have a bulky plastics bin. Um, and hopefully most of you don't uh, put this one on the trash. Looks like you did a great, great job um, with this one. So your plastic detergent bottles can go off to make everything from a new toy to a new playground um, to a new, a new bottle. Uh, glass bottle or jar, no lid. What are your thoughts here? Where does it go? Excellent job, most of you recycle this. Some places only do this in trash and definitely some places could do this, um, could use this again as a reusable thing. Um, and some transfer stations um, could also take glass specially. So great work, we're gonna pop it into the recycling bin. And last but not least here, res uh, refrigerator. Where does this guy go? Too big to put in your recycling bin, I'll tell you that right now. Great job. So it could be reused or re, um, re, uh, resale, resold if it's still good in good working condition. Um, of course, you know, you could always sell it yourself, could go to the transfer station. Um, so great work here. Well done. Let's see where it wants us to take it. If only this specific uh, game, of course, wants us to take it over there. Here we go. Let's see. I love birds. Let's give our park some birds. Shall we keep going? All right, on to level four. Ooh, a natural Christmas tree. You're done with your Christmas tree this year, this past year. Where does it go? Excellent work. Most of you chose yard waste. It could also be um, composted uh, if you're pretty crafty with it. Um, transfer station definitely has some um, collection uh, methods. Um, some of you might put it in the trash. I'm gonna urge you next Christmas, please try and put it 
anywhere but the trash. Um, our landfills should not be filling up with those natural Christmas trees. Um, they can go back to transfer stations. Um, if you cut them up, they can be composted, etc. Lots of great place to uh, put those trees except the trash. Next up, this one's a tricky one, might be different in your area, but a coffee lid, just the lid. What is the answer to this one? Oh, tricky, tricky. So just because it's got a recycling symbol on it and it's plastic doesn't always mean that it's actually able to be put in the recycling bin. I will tell you when I started my job five years ago, this was the hardest pill to swallow. At EcoMain, at our facility, these are not recyclable because they're not a container. So for us, they're trash. That might be different for where you live. But again, just like styrofoam, definitely take a look at your list of what you can and can't recycle and check it out. Make sure you actually are able to put these in the, in the uh, recycling bin. But if not, of course, bring your own container these days, but otherwise they are trash. Or upcycle it. Or upcycle it, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely don't let it go to waste. Metal hangers, metal hangers. Where do they go? Great job, most of you said reuse or resale shop. Excellent work. Some of you say transfer station, that's a great option. They definitely can go in metals bins at transfer stations or other places. Um, typically, and I say typically, um, they don't go in recycling bins. Now, your, again, your recycling facility might take them. That's incredible. And it just depends on what kind of sorting equipment they have at your, um, at your recycling uh, place. So just for us at EcoMain, they don't go in the recycling bin, um, but they can go to, again, multiple places like transfer stations, like resale shops. It's gonna tell me to put it in the trash. That's not usually where they go. Plastic cutlery. Where might these go? You can always bring your own set of metal container, uh, metal, metal utensils if you'd like. And of course, whenever you get takeout, if you're going straight home, say, no utensils, please. Ooh, tricky, tricky. These are not recyclable. And again, I say typically because your area might be different. These are a trash item, trash, trash item. So for us, in many places across the, the globe, these are a trash only item. A tire, a tire or two. Where could a tire go? Excellent, most of you said transfer station. That's usually where they go, that's great. Um, I will preface this by saying that tires are recyclable but it has to go to a special place. So um, a, a tire recycling facility will cut them up and put them you know, under playgrounds or in um, tracks uh, you know, to run around, et cetera. Um, typically they go to the transfer station. You of course could resell your tires if they're still good. Pumpkin, where could you use pumpkin from this Halloween go? The resale shop's not gonna want this one nor does the recycling bin. Excellent work, backyard compost. I'm sure some yard waste places will take them. Kindly don't put them in your trash, just like the natural Christmas tree. Make a, um, an Earth Day commitment this year to put your natural decorations from your, your pumpkins to your Christmas trees into a composting um, bin of some kind and make sure it goes back to the earth instead of to the landfill. So great work, everyone. I do just love birds. So we're gonna put more birds in the park here. Should we do one more? Yes. All right, level five, last one, best one. CDs, DVDs, VHS cassettes. Where might they go?
Excellent. So many places will take these back and they can resell them. Uh, transfer station might have a special bin for them. Certain places can recycle them. Um, you could even mail them to a company called Green Disc. I think they're greendisc.org, um, but otherwise they're trash. So let's see where it tells us to take these. Excellent. Resell, reuse. Beer and wine bottles. Excellent job, recycle, recycle, recycle. Um, some places might only take glass in the trash, which I think is a huge shame um, because of course they can be um, turned into new things. That's great. So overall they are recyclable. And of course in um, deposit states, they can be returned for the deposit, but they are still recycled beyond that. Cooking oil, tricky one, cooking oil. Where could cooking oil go? Hint, not the recycling bin. Excellent, so composting could be a great, great place for this to go. Um, transfer stations might have collection centers, recycling bins, never the right option for your cooking oil or other types of oil. They could go in the trash um, and the resale shop doesn't want them. So let's see where it tells us to take this. If you had backyard composting, you're probably not gonna to wanna to put fats, oils, greases, um, meat, dairy in there uh, because of the animals. But if you have the correct type of bin or you're just a superstar composter, you can put those things in there. Paint can, full or half full. Remember we talked about paintcare.org earlier. Hopefully you check that out at some point to recycle your leftover paint. Paintcare.org for all your paint. And where could paint go? Transfer station, excellent. Could also be reused, et cetera. Um, it could be recycled, but only in the certain areas uh, of, uh, or you know, taken back to the certain places. Never, never, never put uh, paint in your um, recycling bin. You could put an empty can in there, but not a half full or full. The juice pouch, a pouch. Where could this go? Not the yard waste bin. Excellent, trash, trash, trash. Uh, you might know of TerraCycle. They are in a company that does recycle hard to recycle items like juice pouches, um, but it, you, know, you have to put them in certain uh, bins and then mail them back. So just now, ooh, actually Subaru, Subaru, look this up. Some Subaru places are taking back certain items like this. Um, so check out Subaru to see if this is in your area. But overall, if there's not a take back program, they are a trash item. Lastly, milk jugs. Milk jugs. Where could your milk jugs go? Also number two, plastic for fun. This is what that playground was made out of. Recycling. Excellent job. Excellent job. Very well done, everyone. So we put that there and we complete our park. Well, you know, we're in Maine. So we're going to put our moose right here, front and center. So well done, everyone. This guy looks like he's doing the floss, trying to climb up that moose. Ta-da, we have been, uh, we've done a great job here. Um, and I'm gonna put, we love you. Yay! Ta -da. Well done, everyone. Great job, everyone. Wow. Thank you, Katrina, for teaching us how to play the Wicked Smot Recycler game. Absolutely. And definitely want to give a kudos to EcoMain for creating not only a game to make recycling more fun, but even an app to let people know instantly with the click of a button whether an item needs to be recycled, composted, thrown away, brought to the transfer station. That is extremely helpful for people like me who can't remember with all the different rules and guidelines. So I hope all 50 states will follow this example to make it easier for us all to recycle correctly. And the things that can't be recycled, which we learned through the game, 
is what gets our creative juices flowing and lets us start thinking about how we can upcycle it so that we don't add it to the landfills, we don't add it to the waste streams. So that's what brings us to the next part, which is probably the most exciting part that everybody's been waiting for, announcing the winners. But before that, there were a few questions. So Katrina, um, before you go, we have to ask some questions. So um, if possible, because I am an aspiring ecomaniac, so I'd love to try to answer and you just let me know if this is right, because I think I know the answer to at least one of these questions. We're probably only gonna have time to go through two or three. But, um, so the first one is, can you compost meat? And I think the answer is no. The answer is it depends. Oh, okay. So some places have um, drop off programs or uh, place uh, pick, they pick up at your house. That means they're an industrial composter, meaning they are big scale. They know what they're doing. They do it right. If you are just doing it in your backyard um, and you're just starting off, I would not recommend putting meat in there. And that's the same with fats, oils, dairy, greases, um, because animals like mice, rats, raccoons, possums, etc. could be drawn to your pile. And those are not exactly the things that you want, um, you know, close to your house. <laughs> so again, it depends. Um, you can do it if you do it correctly in your backyard. Um, but always, yes, if you've got an industrial composter. Um, I think there was actually another question that I, I did over at sea. Um, and if you're just starting out composting, definitely check out um, Mark King. Um, and he works for the DEP, um, also Humane Collective. Um, and just, just type in um, Backyard Composting Maine and you're gonna find a lot of really great resources. All right, I am taking notes on that because I am also a beginner at composting. That's great, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and then I saw a, a question about, a couple of people asked what is a transfer station? If you could explain a little bit about what a transfer station is. Sure, so not everyone has uh, recycling or trash pickup at their house. Um, some places, especially more rural places, they, um, they're, you know, their houses are too spread out. So they're a, what we call a transfer station is a place where material is brought and then transferred somewhere else. So people bring their recycling and their trash, and then it goes to their recycling and trash facilities. People bring, say, large metals, and it goes to a large metal recycler. People bring their yard waste, and then maybe it's composted there, maybe it's transferred somewhere else. So a transfer station is just a place where material waste of different types is brought, where it can then be transferred to the next place. Got it. So if you live in a place that does not recycle, um, like for example, the complex that I used to live in, they didn't have recycling. So I would just bring my own recycling to the transfer station and then they'll take care of it from there. So Perfect. check with your local town and cities to see where your closest transfer station is in order to participate in recycling correctly. And then, um, uh, examples of resale shop, I did catch from your presentation, Goodwill, Trex Decking, places that take things that can't be recycled, can't be brought to, uh, like Ecomain won't take it, they can't be recycled, but um, they'll, take, they'll take it and make something new out of it and then sell it. Like Trex Decking, they'll do plastic films, which I thought that was a really awesome, great idea and shout out to them for that and Goodwill and is that right? Mm -hmm. Salvation Army, um, you know, even even yard sales, you know, try and and, um, and give it away or sell it locally. Um, but yeah, places like Goodwill and Salvation Army, um, etc. You know, there's thrift shops all over um, consignment stores, etc. Just make sure you're giving those stores what they actually need and want. Um, I saw a recent article lately that said that Goodwill was getting an incredible amount of actual trash. Um, so you might say, oh, well, I, you know, I can't find the other shoe, but I have this one shoe, you know, maybe I'll give them this and it's smelly and dirty, but I'm sure someone out there wants it. Right. So just make sure that you're giving them good stuff, not broken pottery and, you know, stuffed animals with one arm, etc. <laughs> I'm sure there are some places that could use that, but yeah, <laughs> that's a good tip. All right. So, um, and last but not least, the awards. We're gonna announce the winners. So if you're just tuning in now, the We Love You Foundation launched the Upcycling Challenge on Global Recycling Day. So that was March 18th. So up until then, we've been receiving submissions of all kinds of creative upcycled items. So, and our aim was to inspire people to reduce waste by 
repurposing everyday materials that no longer serve a purpose. So instead of throwing it away, adding it to the landfill, just make something new out of it. Like if you have a lot of shipping boxes, this used to be an Amazon shipping box, but I upcycled it. So we received a lot more creative uh, items through the submissions than that. So everybody ready to see the winners? So we're gonna announce the five winners. Each of the winners will receive a $100 gift card for, of their choice. Number one is Birgit Siani at Koba.Siani on Instagram. She upcycled children's clothing. Birgit took clothing that was too small to be worn and turned it into updated wearable clothing. So she made a few t-shirts into dresses, craftily hid some stains by adding homemade patches and resized and decorated an oversized shirt. Very crafty and cute. Let's give a round of applause for Birgit Siani. Number two is Melanie D'Souza. Melanie made a pencil holder and a coaster set from scrap wood from the dumpster. Wow, she was able to use a university laser cutter to cut the design into the wood and then assembled it all with tacky glue. Wow. That is really, really nice. I would totally put that in my office. Well done. Number three, Amy Kindle. At Amy Kindle on Instagram, she made a fountain planter with odds and ends. The fountain itself is actually a cat water fountain that her cats didn't want to use. So she put it to good use. And she also added an unused flower pot an old bucket, and other scraps and bits from the yard. How creative is that? Wow, great job, Amy. Number four, Francia Martinez at Hezegaya3221 on Instagram. Francia made a rug out of old bed sheets and a sack of rice. She cut up the bed sheet into strips and wove them into the rice sack. Wow, how amazing. That looks really soft and really awesome. So good job, Francia. Number five is Tony Atkins at Tony Atkins 101 on Instagram. Built a pretty impressive greenhouse with salvaged lumber, even glass windows and doors. He used polyplastic sheeting that was left over from a construction site to fill in the gaps and cover the roof. Wow, great job, Tony. You just took a lot of plastic out of the landfills, so that's a really creative way to do it. Good job, everyone. Congratulations to all of the winners. And once again, a huge thank you to everyone who participated in the challenge. We wish we could give a gift card to every single one of you. So now in conclusion, thank you to our incredible guest speaker, Katrina. I am so happy that you were able to present about recycling and teach us all kinds of things and even inspire people to make an Earth Day resolution, which I think that all of us probably have now. I know I have one. I definitely want to start a resale, resale shop. I hope that's not too ambitious, but, but thank you so much for these inspiring ideas. Also, thank you to our viewers and to all Upcycling Challenge participants. Anything you want to say, Katrina? No, just um, happy Earth Day and make every day Earth Day instead of just today. Think about your purchases, think about your actions, whether it's saving water when you're brushing your teeth or using your reusable uh, mug every day. Just um, make small changes and we can all make a big difference. Absolutely. It's the small changes that go a long way when we all do one little thing. I mean, we can't all be perfect, but if seven or eight billion people do a little change, then we can save the whole world. So if you want to learn more about We Love You Foundation or get involved with volunteering or anything with us, you can visit we love you, and that's the letter U, USA.org. And also don't forget to share your Earth Day resolutions with us on, on Instagram and also with EcoMain. Try to follow them too, because they're all about recycling. So again, that is, um, we love you with the letter U, USA.org and ecomain.org as well, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we love you.
Bye, everyone. Oh,